He's a California State Assemblyman, and he is the conservative senatorial candidate in California, trying to unseat Senator Barbara Boxer. And, Chuck, uh, it's great to see you. How you doing, man? It's, uh, it's great to be here, and I'm doing wonderful. We had a wonderful day on Capitol Hill yesterday, uh, trying to round up some support. And uh, heading back to California today, I've got a speech tonight. So. Um, now, I know you are, you know, you're running against Carly Fiorina. And Fiorina is sort of the moderate's choice uh, for California. She obviously was a former CEO of Hewlett Packard. You guys are polling, you know, kind of tight. Uh, both of you are are leading Schwarzenegger, I guess, by one point, one point, two points. It's 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 tight. But why should people think today that a conservative can win in a in a state like California that is gone Democrat and in so many ways, whether the Senate races, presidential races over the years? Well, uh, first of all, in California, I think a lot of people in our state are realizing that the solution to problems largely caused by the government isn't more government. Uh, we had an, a remarkable vote on May 19th, uh, a, a vote as to whether or not to extend the largest tax increase in U.S. history at the state level for an extra two years. I led the effort against that vote. I was one of only three Republicans in the Assembly to vote against it and the only one to speak against it. In fact, I resigned my position as chief Republican whip over that issue uh, and it failed. It failed almost two to one. So the people of the state of California rejected the solution of additional taxes. What they want is they want government to live within its means. Uh, I offer a very clear philosophical distinction with Carly Fiorina and with Governor Schwarzenegger. I believe in liberty and freedom. I believe in the Constitution and the preamble of the Declaration of Independence. And as a result, you're going to see me support things like 10 for 10, uh, meaning that I'm going to stand with the Constitution. I'm going to read the bills before they're voted on. Uh, and I don't think you're going to see that with the uh, go-along-to-get-along business-as-usual moderate corporate wing of the party, uh, which I think is exemplified by Carly Fiorina. I think so. And what has liberalism brought to California, Liberal, whether it's liberal Republican policies or liberal Democratic policies? What has happened under liberal rule in California? That's, well, just, an, that's just a question it, that has to be easy. being asked. It's very easy. Right now we are losing 3,000 productive taxpaying citizens every week that are leaving the state. They're heading to places like Texas, which welcomes their hard work and prudent investment. We now have, with 12 percent of the nation's population, California now has 32 percent of the nation's welfare recipients. Uh, that's a fact. If you go to the Health and Human Services uh, website at the federal government, you'll see this disturbing fact that California accounts for almost a third of America's welfare recipients. So we're shipping out of the state the people who are precisely the people that we should be attracting, and we're attracting into the state people who aren't paying into the system. It is not self-sustainable. We are collapsing under this doctrine of liberalism. And I'll tell you, they used to say that California uh, is the future of the nation. And if California is the future of the nation, be afraid. Be very afraid. Well, right now um, it's clear that the sanctuary city policy in California has led to uh, a cultural uh, disarray. It's led to uh, increase in crime. It's led to an increase... Uh, increased burden on social services in California. What would you do about that? Well, clearly, uh, cities need to be following uh, the law. Uh, we are a nation with rule of law, uh, and we cannot allow uh, carve-outs where uh, you have law-free zones and people simply decide that uh, they're not going to follow a state or federal law. In the case of San Francisco, which is the most egregious example, we have case after case where uh, illegal immigrants, in this case minors, uh, have been saved from the INS and brought, been uh, sent to other parts of California where they have committed crimes against uh, law-abiding citizens. And Cal uh, San Francisco continues to insist on uh, putting forward this policy, which has put Americans at risk. Uh, it's just insane, uh, this, this policy that seems to think that you can stand above and, and separate from rule of law. Conservatism is not considered cool in places like, uh, you know, L.A., Santa Monica, San Francisco, uh, Marin County, uh, along the coast of California. Why is that? How are you going to bring cool back to conservatism? Well, it, it's interesting. You see, you're a pretty button-down guy. Yeah, it's interesting guy. you should say that. You know, my biggest and most active volunteer group is in the Bay Area where we have over 300 people helping us out now huh. uh, who actually went and protested 
at uh, Barbara Boxer's egocentric book signing tour that she had. Protesting Whenever, a book signing? That's Why right. did you protest her well, book? Well, when everyone else was holding town halls, what Barbara Boxer did is she went through and she was promoting the latest installment of her ghastly novel. Uh, now, I read this, this. is what I like. you got to start hitting them, Chuck. Yeah, Come on. I ghastly, read... horrific, boring <laughs> novel. I read the first one. Uh, I felt it was part of my op research. Oh. Yeah, she, she has two of them. And it is a, it's a novel about this short, very liberal senator from California. And there's an affair on every other page. And I'm thinking, gee, how much of this is autobiographical? This is just atrocious. And so at, at these book signings, there were so many protesters that at one, she had to, to go in through the back door under her jacket, under police escort, and then leave under her jacket. She would only answer a question from the public if you bought her horrible book. It was, it was pay to play. It, it, you know, can you imagine? I think this is a violation of the Eighth Amendment against cruel and unusual punishment to force a constituent to buy a bad novel to simply ask you a question. So what I find uh, is very remarkable and inspiring is that in the heart of liberalism, we have our largest and most enthusiastic core supporters. And I don't, I don't know whether that's because they feel some degree of responsibility for unleashing Boxer and Pelosi and Feinstein on the world and that this is their way of somehow seeking uh, to retribution or, or to, 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 to get right with the universe, or whether it's because they're in the heart of liberalism and they know what it's about, and so they know that they have to fight against it. Uh, I had 120 people standing room only in Marin County for an event uh, just a couple of months ago. It was a remarkable event, and we're very encouraged by the support we're receiving from the Bay Area. Oh, that's uh, my, my family in the Bay Area, so I spend a lot of time in, in places like Sausalito and I'm telling you, I go into Pete's Coffee Shop over there, and it's I, I do feel like I've, I'm a stranger in a foreign land, Chuck. And by the way, I, I'd appreciate it, instead of calling me Laura, if you, if you show me the respect, Chuck, that I deserve and call me Miss Ingram, because, you know, I've worked hard to, to be a radio talk show host for the last, you know, eight years, r risen to the, you know, top ranks of radio. I, I'd really appreciate it. If you, you, you all right, you got me. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am, and and you can call me Colonel because I worked a hell of a lot harder for that title than I worked for the title of assembly. Oh man, this is that was the classic, wasn't it? That really epitomized that exchange that she had with the general. Epitomized the condescension that uh, so many politicians, and I would say both parties are guilty of this, but f toward the military, this this sneering attitude that I think behind closed doors many of them have for our men and women in uniform. Well, the thing that was even more remarkable about the exchange with General Walsh is he had just gotten back from Iraq. And for someone to dress down a general for following long-established military protocol and calling female uh, members of Congress ma'am and male uh, members of Congress sir, uh, and, and to have her say, uh, it, part, you know, could, could you do me a favor? Could you call me Senator instead of Ma'am? It's just a thing. I worked so hard for that title. We took that and turned it into a YouTube video of 37 seconds long, comparing her to Mike Myers's Doctor Evil character from the Austin Powers series, and we now have about 104,000 uh, hits on that video. It's it's really a, it's it's a pretty funny video, though many people have said that I was unfair to Doctor Evil because he successfully created a global evil empire a working time machine, spacecraft, and after all, what has Barbara Boxer ever done? And uh, some people suggested that perhaps Dr. Evil should run for office in California against Barbara Boxer, and his slogan would be, uh, vote for the greater of two evils. <laughs> what, um, what are you going to do for that, uh, the farmers with that water uh, crisis in California? Because the two California senators, have they done anything on that regard? Well, uh, actually, they, they did a bad thing. They rejected a common-sense solution from Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina, where he suggested that we have a one-year exemption to the Endangered Species Act, narrowly drawn to deal with the Delta smelt issue so that we could turn the pumps back on in Central California. Uh, we have counties now with 40% unemployment, because we've cut off the water. We have fruit and nut trees that have taken decades to grow that are now dead. Uh, and this has all led to Paul Rodriguez, the stand-up comic, to create the California Latino Water Coalition and lead marches of over 40,000 people in Central California yeah. demanding that the water get turned back on. California is the nation's leading producer of fresh fruits and vegetables. It's, uh, agriculture is our number one industry, and we are eviscerating agriculture through the slavish devotion on the altar of environmentalism. You know, in California, and I'm with Barbara Boxer, environmentalism is a religion, 
and economics is a superstition. No, of course, economics is that's actual numbers, and they they add up or they don't add up. They don't like talking about substance. They like to keep it on the emotion shock. And remember, the endangered species that you should be protecting in California is called business. Because that, the small business owners are becoming the endangered species in California under liberal rule. And, Chuck, we wish you the best. I know we'll talk to you as this race goes forward. And Carly Fiorina, you know, she's a, I'm sure she's a great person, nice person, but we need a real.